Quickly before we start, are you allowed to work as a student in Sweden? The answer to that is yes, you are allowed to work while you study and there is no restriction to how many hours you are allowed to work. You just need to apply wisdom. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Nena. If you're new, you're very welcome. For the old subscribers, thank you for keeping it real. Thank you for always returning and thank you for sticking with me. Today, in this video, I'm going to be talking and sharing about common student jobs in Sweden. Now, some of those jobs are common in different parts of the world too, but I'll be talking based on Sweden. These jobs are mostly part-time jobs. You should know that some of those jobs may not be exactly what you want them to be. They may be tagged as menial jobs. However, you shouldn't feel bad about it because it's a means to an end and it helps you go out, meet people and, you know, get more, know more about the society and your environment. And of course, earn some money to take care of yourself. Generally for some of those jobs, the hourly pay ranges from a hundred Swedish krona, or one, yeah, just to be on the safe side, from a hundred Swedish krona to like 150 Swedish krona, depending on the job you do and depending on the company that you work with. That's the average rate for these kind of jobs. Now, you should be careful so that um, you don't take up a job that kind of affects your academics negatively. That way, you're losing both ways you're not concentrating on the main reason why you're here and it's not like you're going to be making so much money in this part-time job okay so you there needs to be a balance you need to kind of strike a balance there now without any further ado let's jump right into it number one i would call the white collar kind of job <laughs> on my list this category now they're not so white collar but i i categorize them as such because most of them are going to be on campus jobs that's what i call them so this includes student and um student assistantship <laughs> um or you being a student ambassador or a student representative now these jobs are quite cool because the upside is they help you stay within the school environment you know you don't have to leave to somewhere different it keeps your mind in focus if you ask me but the downside to it is that they are not so common and as a result it becomes really competitive so the chances of you getting it is low it may even involve you maybe called emailing the professor or asking for research assistantship positions and all or when it's advertised and then you apply but like i said it's quite competitive and the odds of you getting into it are slimmer than the next set of jobs I'm going to be talking about. Now, what's number two? The second kind of jobs I'm going to be talking about, I categorize them as transportation jobs or delivery jobs. This is kind of my most favorite. I say that because it is actually the most flexible. Flexibility in a job is priceless when it comes to the kind of jobs you should be looking at as a student. Now, this kind of jobs allows you time to work at your own pace. Most of the time you can choose when you want to work. Now, these um, transportation jobs includes you being maybe a food delivery agent or an Uber rider if you have your license and you're allowed to. So you can both be an Uber rider and also deliver food too on Uber. Depending on the part of the world where you're at, you can do this with a bike, you can do this on foot, you can do this with your car if you have a license now or even an electric scooter right in, in sweden the common ones are uber eats Walt, fudora yes yes those are the basic or those are the common ones here in sweden if you're a student you can go to school during the daytime and then probably work in the evenings or you know when you're less busy during the day or at lunch as the case may be so they offer some high level flexibility okay the next one which is closely related to what i just discussed earlier in sweden is called reclam reclam means advertisement now, what is what you do in this job is you move around and distribute stuff like newspapers magazines you know things to advertise for a company flyers you know sometimes from free products you know stuff like that and again 
it is quite flexible depending on the agency you're working with you may just have a particular number of hours you need to deliver per week or per month so you choose or you plan yourself based on when you're available to come in while for some you have like a schedule that you have to work with for a period of time so its flexibility is kind of somewhere in the middle but it's quite flexible okay now the next set of jobs i'm going to be talking about are the caregivers this is quite common in the uk yeah and in different parts of the world too now these are probably like elderly people that need help and support or young adults that are um, disabled that probably need help moving around now something about this job or a downside of this job may be that it may not be as flexible depending on who you're taking care of now because these guys are this set of people are they need help it will mostly be during the time of the day when their loved ones are not around them to take care of around the home to take care of them so it may mean that you have to work during the day except of course it's in an established facility like you have in the uk where you can work at night or at different times of the day so this is a little um somewhere in the middle another problem could be the language if it's elderly people in sweden most of them would prefer to speak swedish right so a language the language may be another issue with this kind of job but if you're able to get it it's really cool it's really nice i mean apart from the fact that you're working i feel that you're supporting somebody and you're offering help um i'm someone who advocates for making people's life better making society better i mean putting a smile on people's face i think it's a rewarding job both financially and is it psychologically or emotionally right so it's a win-win a two-way win for these kind of jobs the next set of jobs i'm going to be talking about are attendants or cashiers now i group them as one because you can work uh in the supermarket um to restock items or during the checkout point to take payment from people you could work in the hotel the hospitality industry you could help um, with service you could be in the mall you know all these attendant jobs help people things like that so um another downside of this job could be the language especially if you're in the customer facing segment of it right if you're facing customers the default language is sweden even though everybody speaks english okay so imagine that every single customer that faces you you have to speak english to the person and then the person is speaking swedish back to you okay? there's this friction in communication that will be avoided if you have some good level of swedish okay about flexibility it depends on the company you work with okay and it depends if you are given um, a schedule where you can come in or you switch with somebody as the case may be the next set of jobs after that is not so i don't know if it's popular in other parts of the world it's not even so popular in sweden i mean i know my some of some people that i know that i've never heard about it it's called statist right it simply means extras what you do or your role is to act as extras in say movie scenes for adverts you can act as a model for a clothing brand you can you know be like an extra in a movie scene maybe in a restaurant at a wedding for a music video you know stuff like that just what you do or how it works is you register on the site and then jobs advertise daily so it's your duty or your responsibility to go out to go to the website periodically and check for jobs that you fit into they could be in need of um, males females certain age range some specific requirements maybe with bed you know depending so apply to the ones that suit you now for people of my color a lot of times some of these things need some form of diversity so there are usually openings that ask for people from different ethnicities and races okay so it's a good one now they pay the the, the pay for this job ranges from twenty dollars to over fifteen thousand dollars depending on the role you get sometimes you may get to work for brands or companies that are not so nice by that i mean that they try to take advantage of people they pay so low and probably want you on set from like 8 a.m to 6 p.m depending on what you do you could just use it to pass time okay because on one time when i did something like that i met someone who was a doctor and according to him he was just there to pass time 
Swedes sometimes could get really boring and when you have the opportunity to go out and meet people, some people just jump on it and take advantage of it. So some people don't just do it for the money, they just do it to meet people and yes, you're going to meet a lot of people when you do these things. You even meet actors, Swedish actors and actresses on set, okay? Right, so that's a really good one. It's not so popular, but if you're lucky, you can get roles for 3000 crowns. I mean, in just less than two hours, if you're lucky. So if you want to register, you check status.se, register. But there's a catch. Hmm, thank God I didn't forget this. There's a monthly fee of 69 crowns per month. 69 crowns is roughly um, 7 euros. Yes, 7 euros or 7 dollars, something around that um, range. However, I don't think that... I don't think that this is so much because if you're diligent enough and you apply periodically as often as you can, I'm sure that at least you will get one job in a month enough to offset the bill for the monthly fees. Okay? So I really don't think it's too much to pay. Except you plan to just pay and go to bed, then that money is going to go to waste too. So Statist is a good way to make money in Sweden. The next job is a very common job in Sweden. Very, very common. It's the cleaning job. There are many cleaning companies in Sweden, um, in Stockholm, in big cities, right? Because um, people like to clean their houses periodically and they prefer to do it with a company and then they have specific people coming to clean for them. So these cleaning companies always, always, they are always in need of people because not everybody wants to be a cleaner forever okay so you have people coming staying for short periods and going out or going to start their own businesses i mean as the case may be so there's always need for cleaners in sweden yeah not the best type of job to do to clean people's toilets you know but it is what it is and finally the last set of job i want to talk about are the online or remote jobs okay and the fact that you can be your own boss with the COVID situation came lots of openings for remote jobs. People are gradually, gradually moving onto remote working. Okay, and there are lots of openings if you check online. Remote jobs that are available um, in Sweden. You can check Indeed, you can check Glassdoor, you can check LinkedIn. Okay, um, check for the ones that suit you. I'm sure that if you're diligent enough, you should be able to get something good enough to take care of yourself and then you can you know check out fiverr if you're good with graphics if you're good with video editing if you have some of these skills you can sell yourself online and get people contact you to work for them online i mean some of those skills are skills that i think if you want to travel out of nigeria or out of your country these are some of the skills if you have the time to that you should start picking because they are quite important. You may even need them in your schoolwork. You may need it if you want to start a YouTube channel, it will come in handy for you. So all these things are things that you may want to take a look at. I've mentioned a lot in my previous videos too. I talked about IT, if you can, graphics, video editing. So these and some other things that I believe if you do your research, you'll be able to make some cool money out of online working from home. Yeah. In addition to this, you can be your own boss if you know how to braid, you can, you know, make people's hair, you can start from close Africans around you once in a while, you know, because making hair here is quite expensive. Making or braiding your hair here is expensive. So if you are good at it, then you can make money out of it too, right? Who um that is all for now. That is all for now and yes one more thing before i end this video a lot of people have been asking me can i work to pay my fees hmm. that question is not very straightforward the answer to that question is not very straightforward however if you ask if you can work for your living expenses it is highly possible but for your fees there is no straightforward answer for that, at least not until we do some in-depth analysis to determine why that's not a very good thing to want to consider. Okay, I would make a separate video talking about that, but for now, I would not advise that you bank 100% on moving without your fees or planning to come to work for your fees. 
it's quite complicated and it's not the best option and thank you for being with me my dear subscribers i appreciate you all so much i appreciate you i appreciate the continuous support i appreciate the engagement some of you have even reached out to me privately i'm so grateful it is because of you that i keep coming back to do what i do and i promise this year i'll be more in your faces than i've been in the past I promise. If you have video requests, if you have things you want me to talk about, I have a lineup already. I'm going to try as much as possible to be getting it out there. But if you have anything you want me to talk about that's of concern to you, please let me know in the comment section. Engage me. Engage me. I'll be there to answer. All right. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.